you've been out of the game. You haven't scored a point. You're celebrating now 20 years away from basketball, about 20 years or so away from the NBA. But part of the reason you continue to have such a large voice in the game is because you're an old school guy that will not cater to the new school mentality. So that said, I put you in a room with James Harden, with the Rockets, a team you know pretty well. What would you just tell him straight? What would you just tell him? Yo, man, we're going to get rid of you. we just trying to get as much as we can. Uh, you know, he's – listen, that article was devastating. I mean, I'm a, I've am never – listen, LeBron got a lot of power. I mean, he deserves it. I mean, listen, Magic, Bird, LeBron, uh, Michael, there's probably only four or five players – who I've ever played against or been watching for the last 30 years should have some type of power. Let's be realistic. Because, well, you, you know, you talk about number one guys who are uh, – this guy, they say he's always late, which that's like my number one pet peeve. you got to be on time because if you're late one time or two times, that's that's all right. But if you're late all the time, you just say, I don't care about the players, I don't care about the coach, I'm just going to do it my way. But when you talk about trading players, like, that's amazing to have that type of power. And uh, like I say, I don't I don't remember Bird, Magic, Michael. Uh, uh, LeBron probably has something, but I don't think LeBron would abuse the way it seems like James was abusing that system in Houston. That was – that's crazy. Yeah, Chuck, it's, it's, it's pretty wild. And I – Look, it, and, and as I said, you know and I know because I've been knowing you for a long time, when we played, yes, we took care of business on the court as well as on the field if we wanted to have some extracurricular time, but we didn't show up late to practices. We did the things that we needed to do within our team. With that being said, what is the perfect landing spot for James Harden if he's moved and when he's moved? Well, number one, I want to see James, KD, and Kyrie together with that New York media. That's just my dream scenario. Uh, that's what I want. Hey, listen, Key, I want that more than anything in the world because <laughs> you guys know all three of those guys are, number one, I, I don't know any of them really well. I think they're all three uh, good guys, but I think they all three got some issues, and I cannot wait to see those three guys play together uh, because I think it would be fascinating because all three of them need the ball and want the ball, and I just don't think it will work. But I want to see it because I want to see it implode. Listen, if I'm New Jersey, uh, Brooklyn, give me that kid with the afro who I like a lot, uh, Allen. (laughs) Give me Dinwiddie and give me LeVert and let the Rockets go forward with a really pretty good solid team. Um I take that trade tomorrow uh, if if I'm Brooklyn uh, or, or the Rockets. Excuse me, if I'm the Rockets. Because, like I say, you give me Allen, Dinwiddie, and Levert. I'm like, and you got John Wall now. We're just as good as we were going to be, but we're not going to have that drama, and we'd have a pretty solid team because uh, James clearly does, does not want to be there. See, my thing with the James thing is I don't know if he can play in another system. That's what, to me, was going to be fascinating to watch if and when he gets traded. Can he only play that one way? And this notion that, like, well, if he goes somewhere. No, he's played the exact same way for six or seven years. He's not going to get to Brooklyn and say, well, I'm going to stand around and watch James and Kyrie, excuse me, Kyrie and Kevin. Like, I want the ball. So I I think that's what's going to be fascinating wherever James goes. Because I think he can only play one way. And, and, and number one, it ain't fun to watch. And he's the best offensive player I've ever seen. But I'm not going to stand around and just watch him dribble the whole time. That's no fun. And I guarantee you Kyrie and KD ain't going to sit around and watch that. Big Brother Chuck, take me to the, take me to the, the Brooklyn scenario. First off, I haven't heard you talk about how Kyrie uh, – had his boycott of the media a few days ago and how ultimately you think this scenario, understanding personality traits will work out between Kyrie and KD in a major market like New York City with the way the media is always looking to hang on to some type of action. 
You know, Kyrie is uh, – he's interesting. I don't know what's going on with that scenario. Uh, it's like he's – hes I, I'm just not sure what he's doing. Uh, I don't like it. You know, they don't pay you $40 million just to play basketball. Part of it is sitting down with you guys, uh, uh, you know, sitting down with me and Kenny and Ernie and Jet, uh, talking to New York reporters. Being with the media is part of your professional obligation, and you can say what you want to say, uh, you know. But you know these guys today, they're different. Uh, I I don't hate on them, but I'm not sure what point Kyrie is trying to make. Uh, I'm, and when he talks, I'm like, what the hell is he trying? What is he saying, and what is he trying to say? Listen, guys, I think a lot of these guys. He starts talking about what an artist he is. He's a basketball player. That's what he is. We're we listen. We're we're not uh, in the we're not trying to we're not front line responders. We're not teachers. Yo, man, you dribble a basketball. Stop acting like you're the smartest person in the world. Now, can you talk about social issues and things like that? Of course. But some of that other stuff, I'm like, yo, man, you do realize you're just a basketball player, right? Uh, and it seems like he's like, no, I want you guys to know I'm the smartest guy in the room. I'm like, well, first of all, you're not. You only went to college for six months. A lot of player, a lot of guys are smarter than you are. Just answer stupid basketball questions. And if you want to say something about social justice, say it and mean it because it's important. Answer. Let me ask you this. How much pressure is on Giannis now that he signed this big deal? Do you see him staying the full length of the five years in Milwaukee knowing that other max superstars have decided to move on from those deals to other teams? after they didn't win championships? Yeah, I think what is hard now um, is to not follow what everybody else does. And, you know, some people have decided it's best for them in their career to leave and try to team up with people and chase a championship um, trying to stack the deck. I think what Giannis has done is very commendable and very – necessary for our league to stay healthy is that a small market franchise player of his stature without winning yet with the whole thing has decided to stay. And I I think he will stay the whole five year. Uh, I think he's cut from a different cloth than a lot of guys. Um, I don't know why he's different, but I think he is. And I think he should be commended for it. What's your expectation for the Nets and Kevin Durant this year? It's a hard injury. We all know that really hard. And I think uh, people trying to minimize that because of Durant's greatness is doing a disservice to Durant and what he's going to accomplish overcoming this. I, I, I am so interested in watching can he retain that every night dominance that we're used to seeing or particularly early in the year, is it up and down because, um, you know, that Achilles injury is basically undefeated as far as, you know, robbing you of some, some of the athleticism that you once had, but Durant is so ultimately skilled uh, from a shooting ball handling skill standpoint that I think he can overcome a little bit reduction in athleticism and still be a dominant NBA player. Coach, before we let you go, how much money would you lay on Luka to win the MVP this year? Well, I don't have your money, Keyshawn. Oh, so stop, it's, stop. It's like, uh, stop. I, 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 don't, I don't gamble. Other, Mark Jackson always says to me, would you quit spending other people's money or he says something crazy to me about not talking about other people's money. But I would say like, I think Giannis, uh, if I had to bet would be a three Pete, that would be my guess. Unless the media gets tired of voting him, you know, MVP because it's a regular season award. Obviously James will be up there. Uh, Davis may well be too, but you're right about Doncic. He, because he has the ball in his hands so much, and Dallas is good, um, really good, I think he's going to have the benefit of being a high-usage player that performs at a high level, plus they're going to win enough uh, to get that type of recognition. So 
if I had a hundred dollars, I'd put uh, sixty on Giannis, twenty on James, and twenty on Doncic. Mm. Okay. Wow. Interesting. Does that add to a hundred? By yeah, the way, no, it was only six bucks, bucks, but that's okay. You got it right. You got it right. <laughs> All right. Good. Because I, I wasn't the smartest dude in the world. Now, I know it's early, especially out there in Texas where you live. It's about 7.20 in the morning. So you can catch Jeff on the call of the Lakers and the Suns NBA preseason this Friday night at 10.30 Eastern on ESPN. And I just wanted to mention, because Jeff mentioned the article, if you're unfamiliar, amazing story on ESPN.com yesterday about Houston never saying no to James Harden and now dealing with the fallout of it. There's some amazing quotes in there. So I encourage you to check that out on ESPN.com, the story that Jeff referenced. Jeff, we'll see you on the air Friday and next Tuesday. We'll do it for real. Thanks. All right. Take care, guys. All right, Coach. That's Jeff Van Gundy. Thanks. Don't count, count other people's money. He stayed doing that. I know what Mark Jack. I don't like when people do that. <laughs> I don't like that. I, I, coach, uh, uh, you see how quick I cut him off? Uh, no, 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 come on, man. Because yeah. you get people's wheels start turning. Right, and you coach the Knicks Zubin, and the Rockets I, I will, long enough. You made a lot of money. He's he's doing all right. Yeah, Zubin, sitting up will, telling me he ain't got no Zubin. money. I will. It, it would have been. You imagine how fascinating it would have been if Jeff Van Gundy was the head coach of the Houston Rockets and he was dealing with this whole James Harden situation. Here's the funny thing. Oof, I didn't. I didn't say that would it. Have been Jay. Fiery. I asked him that. He didn't answer it. I get it. I know he doesn't want to put himself in there. That was the first thing I asked him, and I understand. But, He's in the media now, so he deflects very well. Let well, let me ask you this though, Jay. Mm -hmm. You say, what if he was the coach? What if he was the coach? What if he was the coach, and Harden was accepting of it? And Westbrook was still there, and there wasn't any issues, and he was accepting the roster. See? So what if, they, you yeah. know, both of them were still there? Certain coaches handle situations different because they know how to communicate with you. Fair scenario, Kate. Okay, fair. Indeed. Speaking of the NBA tip, we're asking this morning on the Keyshawn J. Will and Zubin Nation on the Dr. Pepper Twitter feed, which NBA star is the most pressure to win a championship this season? You sort of heard Key ask the question with regard to Giannis, and 40% of you have said Giannis at NYD.